<clears throat> excuse me, I'll start with this. <laughs> Just clear my throat <laughs> first. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Very Vogue with me, Val Klein Hands. We've got the lovely Mackenzie Cristera in the building today. She's one of my favorite content creators that loves posting about travel, clothes. Yes. She's an engineer. I mean, she kind of sort of does it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mackenzie, thank you for being here. I'm so glad you're here. Oh my gosh, thank you. And you're too sweet. Um, yeah, I don't talk about being an engineer a lot. So it's nice to know that that's like noted and people know. <laughs> it is. Well, so how did that begin? Why engineering? Yeah, so um, growing up in school, I was very academic fo like focused. Um, I did year on swim team, but I was always like, the super nerd <laughs> um just really liked school was really good at math and science honestly really enjoyed it um I grew up in Atlanta so being there Georgia Tech is there it's a great engineering program um okay. I kind of actually wanted to go into forensic science when I was younger but I got into Georgia Tech on a scholarship and I was like well I'm not going to go to one of the best engineering schools and not do engineering mm, um so okay. I decided to do yeah I decided to do chemical engineering um and actually really ended up liking it and um, decided to stay there. I just like the possibilities with it. There are a lot of different industries. It's creative, but technical at the same time, because you're basically developing processes for these either different chemicals. Um, I'm in medical device now, which is kind of more the route I wanted to take. Um, so that like biotech medical route. Um, yeah, just really ended up liking it. I feel like it merged a lot of like my creative thought process with like my technical and science and math background. Mm. Um, yeah, I like it. So now I'm in process development for a medical device company. So kind of trying to figure out how to make the device and how to make it work and manufacturable. So, uh, okay. So are you, yeah, it is very interesting. Are you maybe helping to create uh, just the products that we use in like knee replacements or like yes. this, uh, medical devices and surgery maybe? Yeah, so the device I'm specifically working on is actually for a um, heart procedure. Oh, so cool. So working on a type of device that helps if you have cardiac arrhythmia. So if you like have an irregular heartbeat. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, so if it keeps the heart in check, keeps it pumping, keeps it moving, keeps it on a regular rhythm. Got it. Yeah. That's, that's cool. really important. Holy hell. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Do you ever have... Do you ever have I, to like put yourself in check and be like, I'm doing this right now. Holy, <laughs> oh my God. Um, I feel like the people at work humble me because like being mm. in process development, like I don't come up with the device. Um, and it's like I, so our R&D team does and there's people on the R&D team that are so, so smart. Um, mm. So like whenever I work on a new device, just like learning about it and the technology, I'm like, how did someone even come up with like, they knew to do this? And like yeah. got it to work in the first place. Um, so I feel like I'm surrounded by really smart people. Um, and then I do like, it's fun when I like talk to my mom or my dad and then tell them what I, I'm doing. And they're like very impressed. And that kind of was like, oh, it is cool. Like, let's check. <laughs> like I worked hard and now I get to work on something cool. So yeah. Uh, hey, well, we all want our parents to be proud of us too. That's got to feel good. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It does. And you know, I... Georgia Tech was not easy. There were definitely many nights spent crying and wondering if I could do it. So it's nice yeah. to know that I have, and they definitely helped me through that and calmed me down several nights. I would be crying after all the calculus I'm sure you had to take and all oh, that. Like yes. I, that would that would make me cry. The math, period, because I'm sure yeah. a lot of math was involved. Yes, and I used to love math, and I still do, <laughs> but I joke that I can't do simple math anymore. Like. Um, oh got it okay like I have to pull out a calculator to like take count at the different like stations at work of like where the different parts are and I'm mm -hmm. like this is silly like this is literally simple math and I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I would just became very so relied on that calculator for like all the calculus and crazy equations but no yeah no judgment for me whatsoever <laughs> I still need a tip calculator whenever I'm at a restaurant oh I'm yeah like no. what is I'm like hold on what's 20 percent of that again yeah, yeah. no I Mm -mm. I need help. <laughs> Simple math. I swear. I need the calculator. Yeah. So we go from engineering to social media or, well, you're kind of yeah. doing both at the same time. How does yeah. social media fit in? So, um, I felt like I needed, even though like I get to be somewhat creative working in med device, like the FDA is involved and it's still very regulated. Mm. Um, 
and I was helping a friend of mine with her startup, um, doing a lot of research for her. And it was also very technical and science-based. And then at the time I was also in grad school, um, getting my master's in chemical engineering. So I was like heavily technically focused and it was just like a lot. And I felt really like drained and not myself. And I was like, I need an outlet that isn't technical. That is just fun. Something I enjoy. Um, I'd started dating my boyfriend at the time when I was in this and he as an aspiring photographer. So a lot of times we would just mess around have fun with the camera. And I was like, I feel like this is something I've been wanting to try. So I decided to like start the blog, get more into social media. And then about a year into it, I bought a camera and I feel like that's when it like really clicked. Like I got a nicer camera. I started learning photography and editing and mm. we would be driving around and I would see a pretty scene. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that would be so pretty with this outfit and styled like this. And like, I had a whole image uh, in my head. Yep. That's um, how it starts. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what, this is fun. It's a way that's, it's so different from my job. So when I get stressed at work, I have this really nice creative outlet and I feel like it balances yeah. like the two aspects of my brain really well, if that makes any sense. It makes um, total sense. We all need yeah. that. I I mean, so right now I am a medical administrative assistant okay. with orthopedic surgery at Mayo Clinic. So okay. I am literally keeping like helping three orthopedic surgeons at Mayo with their patients, the scheduling, uh, keeping, keeping their personal schedules in check, me taking messages from patients, getting information. And it just can be like, oh my God. Like yeah. when you hear, when you hear about their symptoms or when you hear about how much pain they're in or, and you hear it in their voice because they're calling. So it's almost like this, like yeah. I'm sort of experiencing this with you because it's like, it's trippy. Like it, it can do the most at times whenever yeah. it, it, you could just hear that they're struggling. So uh. to have a creative outlet, like what you're describing, whether it's photography or for me, for me, it's also Instagram and, and this right now podcasting. Yeah. We need it so, so, so important. Yes, absolutely. I think if you just always do one thing and that's it, even if you love it, like everything becomes stressful, everything can become taxing. I feel like we're not meant to just do like one thing. Right. And I'm not even talking like you don't need to make anything a side hustle, but like hobbies or just doing something for you that there's no... I don't know, like less pressure associated with no deadlines. No, you have to be here at a certain time and mm -hmm. yeah, just different outlets, try different things. Yeah. I think totally. it's really ah, I saw your pup. What's your pup's name? Oh yeah. My dog's name is Milo. Um, Hi Milo. We, yeah. We also have two cats. So I think the cat just ran in here and he was chasing her and I'm like, sorry oh. if it's chaotic. <laughs> no, no, that sounds like my apartment too. I mean, and I only have one cat and she's enough. Yeah. She loves to wake us up at like two in the morning and, oh. and I'm like, no, can you give us like three hours, girl, before we feed yeah, you, please? Like, please, that's far too early. Yeah. We got a kitten uh. last fall and she's definitely at that phase where it's like, I'm going to come wake you up at five in the morning because she plays yeah. fetch. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, here's my hair tie or she has these cute little fish taco toys. She's like, here you go. Mm -hmm. Please throw it for me. And I'm like, I am asleep. Yeah. Like, like No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a full house over here. <laughs> and my cat is the reason that my hair ties are missing too. I'm like, oh, yeah, I so bought a pack of a hundred. It's a cat thing. I don't know what I'm like, I bought a pack of a hundred yesterday. Oh, and there are God. two left. Where are they? <laughs> I'm like, did the Roomba suck them up? Because they're not on the floor. And yet she no, always the cat did. Like, yeah. There's always something to bring to me. <laughs> so, yeah, if you see them jumping around, that's what's going on. <laughs> no, I love it. It's it's so cool. Uh, the travel bug, because traveling yeah. is definitely something that you post about a lot. How did yes. that bite you? How did we get an interest in travel? Um, so growing up, we didn't really go and I mean, we travel, but it was like by car. Uh, yeah, gotcha. It was, okay. my sister, the two of us are a year apart, but swimming year round didn't leave a lot of time for like vacations, even when like we had school spring break we were like required to find if we were traveling for spring break or traveling for Christmas, we were required to find a gym that we could train at. So like oh. we didn't take a lot of trips growing up that weren't like family trips or like just drivable range. So when I graduated college, um, I asked my sister and my cousin if they wanted to come to Italy with me. Um, cause my family's, yeah, my family's Italian. 
I that knew was... by your last name, <laughs> Othello Paisano. I knew yes. it. I knew it. My maiden name's Paul Mary. I knew it. Right. I didn't want to say anything, but I knew it. Yes, yep. meatballs. We're Italian. here. Yes. Oh my God. My dad makes the best meatballs. They're so good. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I haven't gotten it quite down, but I will get there. It's, so but <laughs> and that recipe has been handed down for 50 years, I bet. Yeah. I'm yes. Yep. So it's delicious. But I really <laughs> wanted to go to Italy and kind of explore that more. It's like a part of my family. My it's my dad's side that's Italian. Um, they don't talk about it too much. Apparently, my grandfather and my great grandfather were like not great great people. Oh, you can probably two and two together with Italian and not great people. <laughs> Sicilian. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, we'll leave it there. All right. <laughs> so, I got you. It's not like we didn't inherit a lot of like the culture. We're not like this big Italian family, but I was definitely interested in it and I hadn't traveled. Mm -hmm. So three of us decided to go to Italy after I graduated college. We were there for two weeks around Christmas mm -hmm. and I, I just got the bug. I was like, this is amazing. I feel like it opened my eyes up so much to like other people's culture and how they live. Um, and I just really enjoyed traveling and like exploring different things and experiencing new things. Um, and kind of decided after that, I wanted to take one big trip a year. Yeah. Um, and like, whether that be most of the time international, cause that's usually a bigger trip. Um, and I don't, let's see, where did I go the year after that? We did Germany for mm -hmm. Oktoberfest, which is mm -hmm. super, super fun. If you haven't been to Oktoberfest, it's so fun. Um, the festival itself is like free, but then you pay for the tents, but very worth yeah. it. Everybody's yeah. in their Tinderhosen's and Durndles and like, if I'm pronouncing <laughs> that correctly. And it's so fun. And like, you just have to like, we fully went, we all got the costumes. Um, and then I had a friend of mine from when I was an intern who was living in Dusseldorf. So then mm. after October we just went to Dusseldorf and like used that place as a home base and took trains everywhere. Cause like the trains in Europe are great. Once you're over there, it's so easy to get anywhere else. It's like, so we went to Amsterdam, um, explored other parts of Germany, did like Cologne, um, where else did we go? Düsseldorf, Munich. I'm forgetting one place off the top of my head. Um, That's almost oh, the whole country. We did, yeah, we did Bruges in Belgium. Oh, and did, okay, like, cool. Overnight there. And that was that trip. And then I've done St. Lucia, um, but we didn't stay like in a, one, like all-inclusive resort which I really liked I think St. Lucia was one of my most eye-opening trips because I was always under the impression that these like islands that are very tourist-based and have these all-inclusive resorts that are really expensive like the island itself would be well off that's not the case mm, so like okay. St. Lucia as a country you're going through the little towns and it's I mean it was eye-opening um mm -hmm. it definitely made me feel just very lucky to be in the situation I was in. Um, and I'm glad that we didn't stay in an all-inclusive. We stayed at like a local hotel and really got to talk to people that live there, which again, was just a great experience for me as I think I was 23 or 24 at the time to just realize like, even though I, my whole life hasn't been like cupcakes and rainbows, you know, I am so yeah. sheltered compared to some people out there. Um, and also just got to experience, I think more of a, authentic side of it not staying at like one of the big tourist yeah. hotels um and like it was still gorgeous and I would absolutely do it that way again um I have done the all-inclusive route for Cancun and that has its place too <laughs> like <laughs> if you want a true vacation to just like relax and not stress because you've paid it all up front and then all your drinks are covered your food's covered um that's definitely nice too it's just a different type of travel um but like, if you need to de-stress, that's the way to go. All inclusive for de-stressing. Yes. Okay. Travel yeah. tip number one. Got it. Yeah. Number two, if you want to actually get a feel for the country, be in the country. Don't be at the yeah. resort. Okay. Yeah. Don't be at the resort. Um, especially. And I think that's more so when you go to like some of the like islands and stuff. And then, cause Europe, you know, we stayed at <laughs> the most interesting place I stayed was actually for Oktoberfest. Yeah. Um, we stayed it was when I say it was literally an adult frat house like that's what it was that's not an exaggeration my friend who was staying in Dusseldorf found the air it was on Airbnb looked very normal in the pictures and we get there and like 
it's literally this like three four story like townhouse situation we're on the very top level which was a loft didn't mm. even have a door you could close and the beds were just like on the floor there were like little wooden things in between so you could like store things or we're like okay this is interesting but you know we were a bigger group I think we were like six or seven of us <laughs> we're like oh, you know, we're here it's not like it's uh, Munich is crazy in October fest. we couldn't find anything else and we're like it's okay. fine but like the first and second level were literally like it looks like you're in a college fraternity with like the rooms like with 30 year olds yeah <laughs> Like, no, like they were probably mid twenties to mid thirties and like Oktoberfest has weeks that different countries tend to come. So we were there. Oh, during I didn't know that. Australia. Yeah. We were there during Australia week. Oh, so there boy. were a bunch of Australians at this grown fraternity house. <laughs> it was very odd. And they literally had parties at night in this like basement room with a bar. They were wearing sashes. It was a whole thing. And the weirdest part about it was um, <laughs> I am a really light sleeper. Oh, so, God. So that was a nightmare for you. Well, I was able to fall asleep. And then my friend Kayla, who was traveling with us, had like the sniffles one night. So there was a window open, like pretty much above her, like one of like a um, okay, I like kind of window. Mm -hmm. And so I woke up because it was raining and I heard her sniffling and like... <laughs> She's sniffling and all of a sudden these people walk by and hand her a tissue and she's just like, thank you. It's like blows her nose and goes back to sleep. I asked her around in the morning. She was like, I barely remember that. Like, I don't and remember then, that. Yeah. I watched these people walk into the closet that was in the room. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Like four people just went into this closet, like a legitimate closet in this like loft area we're in. So I tell people in the morning and I'm telling Kayla, she's like, wait, it's coming back to me. Like, I just assumed it was one of you guys that handed me the tissue. I'm like, no, that was some strange man that just walked through all of us sleeping into a closet. We opened From closet Australia. Oh, I don't even know who they were. Oh, I was going to say, was it one of the Australians? <laughs> like, there you go, Mike. <laughs> I would hope so. At least we had met the Australians the night before. But we like open the closet door and there's no one in there, but there are like beds stuffed into this closet. So they had like rented out the closet too. Like it was oh a whole God. experience, but I mean, the host was really nice and we had a good job and the location was great, but I'm really glad that we were like six or seven of us, like there's safety in numbers. Oh my, yeah. The travel tip number three, safety in numbers and yes. be mindful of where you're staying. <laughs> yeah. Check reviews. If a friend books stuff for you, still check the reviews yourself and make sure you're okay with it. <laughs> Why do you think it's important to document your travels? Because I, I, you obviously post about them, and yeah. I looked at your Badlands one, and I was like, oh my god, I want to go back. If I was there a couple years ago, it's for us in Minnesota. It's not far. For it was the eight yeah. hour drive. Um, yeah. Just to put it in perspective for people that don't know, so it's easier for us to get there. I love yeah. being there. Why do you think it's important to document your travel moments? I think I just, when I look at my photos that I've taken, I feel like it almost takes me back to that moment. Um, mm. I remember the sights. I remember how I felt. I am, I actually print most of my photos and have photo albums and cool. it's really fun to like sit through and go through them and talk about the trips and just remember being there, even with people that weren't with you. Um, so that's kind of why I personally have always taken a lot of photos. And then obviously starting the blog, I've taken more and more intentional with them, mm -hmm. but I feel like it also, like people have asked me, you know, like, what did this look like? How was this? And like having those photos to talk about it really helps. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start my blog too. And like, I naturally like planning things. I naturally like traveling and I naturally like helping people. So I'm like, if I can just help one person plan a trip or you know, this photo I took inspired one person to get out there and go, like, I'm happy. Yeah. Cause sometimes pictures can do a better job putting things into perspective for somebody than just describing yeah. it can. Like I've had people ask me, oh, what did the Badlands actually look like? I'm like, uh, if Mars and it's, Arizona had a baby, yeah, that's how I would describe it. Right. But they don't know to, that could give them a completely different picture in their head versus me just showing them right. a picture. 
yeah and i feel like yeah everybody could google you know the badlands and get the stock photography or whatever but yeah it's coming from somebody you know or trust or a different type of source like that i don't usually it's their perspective too which is i find more unique than just you know the stock photography stuff that you can you know google image search and whatever yeah totally travel tips i love the fashion i also love you're definitely a fashionista like myself how would you describe your style oh man that's hard um i feel like i keep it generally pretty simple with some fun pieces like i like my classic pieces um like the top i'm wearing right now is very just a classic bodysuit good color it's comfortable um but i love like really fun pieces and making a statement with like one piece um Mm -hmm. like sometimes it's a shoe or like a skirt or just like one thing I'm not a big pattern mixer um so I think I'm probably like classic with a little bit of boho yeah and I'm not I think so I do like I try the trends out but I don't go super super heavy on them Mm -hmm. um mainly because I'm just never really really done that even when I was young like I never tried gaucho pants wasn't my thing <laughs> oh god yeah yeah I we all remember those yeah I wish I could take those yeah. back <laughs> I try to find pieces that I feel like I can wear and get a lot of use out of um, that's yeah yeah and something that I'm comfortable with I feel like it's taken me a while to kind of figure out what I like um trying to like what is a good word to describe my style I don't know I feel like it's like comfortable yet still chic and fashionable like I'm not gonna wear something that's uncomfortable so like if you see me wearing something I'm comfortable (laughs) yeah that's important (laughs) it's important yeah and you know all my friends like especially the ones like not necessarily in like the social media fashion world um in even before I started this some of my really good college friends would be like you're always dressed up I'm like I don't feel like I'm dressed up I like to look right. put together and cute but I'm always comfortable and I was like they're like yeah but I'm in leggings and t-shirt you can't be as comfortable with me I was like my jeans are stretchy like my boots have really good support or whatever and my shirt's just fitted it's not tight it's not uncomfortable so yeah. I think you can have both I think you can be comfortable and stylish at the same time it's just finding things that fit properly or good materials um yeah like a lot of the fast fashion brands are going to be cheaper materials they are going to be itchy or scratchy or just like don't breathe well um mm-hmm. so I think it took me you know when I was younger I was definitely like oh well it's only $50 I'm gonna like, get it and then I'm uncomfortable and like as I've gotten older I'm like no like I can spend a little bit more and be comfortable and have this piece a lot longer too. Mm, yeah, that's so key. My friends yeah. have said the same thing too. They're like, oh my God, you're always so dolled up. And I'm in a t-shirt and leggings and I feel great and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. At what point did we convince ourselves yeah. that any, anything but a t-shirt and leggings was uncomfortable? Because that's right. not true. It's not true. And they say this with the airports all, all the time too. They're like, for the airport, you're really dressed up because I'm not in sweats in it. I might be like in jeans and a tee, but yeah. they're in sweats or, you know, damn near pajamas. And I'm like, right. what do you do when you land? Are you going yeah. to a sleepover when you land? Like, I, I don't, I don't yeah. know how that works. You being the traveler, you are probably have your own thoughts on that airport style. And what I are mean, people I- doing when they get that comfortable at the airport? Are they yeah. having a sleepover when they land? <laughs> I've seen people change in like the airport bathroom of where they're at. Um, I have definitely worn like a lounge set. Mm, especially okay, if that's I'm in, put together. Like, yeah. If I'm in like on a flight that's at 5 a.m. and I'm getting up at two or something to get to the airport Ew. and I'm like, yeah. I'm in a lounge set and sneakers, but it's still cute and put together because I just feel better when I'm put together. Mm-hmm. And I think that really became relevant and <laughs> obvious during COVID because I was working from home and like I only worked from home for like a month and then they're like yeah you're manufacturing get back in there but even for that month like I wouldn't I'd get up I'd most of the time not really change Mm -hmm. or like just change into different sweats (laughs) yeah like I wasn't doing my hair I wasn't doing my makeup and I just started feeling 
gross and like not me and I don't know I feel like I'm missing a part of me if I'm not either I don't know like looking put together or cute in my opinion and that, that could still be comfortable in like like I'm in sweatpants right now because I'm like at home after work but they're <laughs> so cute like they're you know nice sweatpants and like, I don't know so I, I don't think you have to sacrifice comfort for style or vice versa um, no and compromises I think, can be made yes 100 percent. that's how I feel like in a lot of aspects of my life like it's all about balance it's all about compromise you know so I feel like I do that a lot with my style and especially traveling and looking cute you know you can be comfortable and still be on an airplane and sitting you know like I've worn yeah. jeans on plane and some people are like you're crazy why are you wearing jeans on plane I'm like this flight is two hours long like I I'll be fine <laughs> like or I've worn booties and they're like wearing booties for a plane I'm like I'm sitting my feet are fine then I'm getting off and we're like gonna go to dinner and now I don't have to change yeah, um, yeah I generally go like closer to like super comfort like I said early in the mornings or on long international flights mm -hmm. so okay. but for those like international flights I guess another travel tip for you always try to take the flight that lands early in the morning where you're going oh, okay why is that because then you can just power through the jet lag, go to bed at a reasonable hour, but early. And then you wake up the next morning and you're probably fine. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Got it. So I'm going to Paris in May um, with a, actually a group of content creators from Minnesota. We're all very excited. Um, Fun. But I think I'm landing at like 830 in the morning, but okay. I'm, it's a eight ish hour flight. So I'm probably going to be actually I already know what I'm wearing because I've of course been planning all my outfits for Paris it's Paris duh yeah I have to but I'm wearing like an Abercrombie like onesie um like athletic jumpsuit so tight mm -hmm. but still looks put together with like a cropped sweatshirt over top of sneakers well, I'm not gonna wear that around in Paris at 8 30 in the morning so like I'll have in that case I will have something to change into once we get to like our Airbnb um, Fun. So for those longer like flights, I will because eight hours is a long time to be like, like I love jeans. They're a little uncomfy after eight hours, even if you have super nice jeans. Yeah, I totally feel you on that. I can't wait yeah. to see the pictures from that. So what's next from you? What are we looking forward to as far as your content or anything you're excited about? Well, Paris is definitely coming up. Super excited about that. Um, it'll be kind of like a fun double whammy trip. So I'm spending the first five days with the girls. We're all content creators here. So there will be definitely be like lots of fun fashion, just like funny, trendy reels, mm -hmm. like humorous stuff. And then uh, my boyfriend, Jonathan, who I said is a photographer is actually coming at the same time as us, but he's just going to be off doing his own thing while I'm with the girls. And then we're staying for another like five days after. Wow. Um, so I'm sure we'll be creating some fun content. Um, so it'll be a lot of fashion from that. And then also, you know, like the full travel itinerary I do, lots of travel pictures of the sites, talking about, you know, tips for the city, kind of how I did things, how I would do things differently. Um, besides that, I have some other trips coming up before then. I feel like I'm hitting a very busy season of travel. Summer um, always so is, isn't it? I know. And I'm a lot of it's weddings, but I try to take advantage when I'm traveling for weddings and kind of do something in the city too yeah so yeah, it's yeah. not just fly in go to wedding go home um you know I try to take maybe one vacation day there so I can explore the city I'm in and you know just try it out if I've never been so I'll be going to well I'll be flying back home um, back to Atlanta and then my first wedding is right outside of Helen Georgia which if people haven't been or aren't familiar Helen is basically like Georgia's equivalent of Oktoberfest it's oh. like a very German town Got it. um lots of like brewery and like German food and yeah it's like Oktoberfest year around there um it's fun <laughs> if you're ever in that area it's about an hour and a half outside of Atlanta um but there are also some gorgeous North Georgia mountains around it and the weddings at a winery there so that should be fun um I probably won't get as much like travely, travely things out of it than I normally do for the blog because it's like, I'm seeing a lot of like high school friends since I grew oh, yeah. up in the area, yeah, but yeah. Um, I've never been to this winery. So I'll probably definitely take some photos of it and like talk about it. And then 
that's at the end of April and then Paris. And then I'll be going to New Orleans for a bachelorette, um, which will be fun. I've never been to New Orleans for a bachelorette. I've been to New Orleans. I've never um, been, period. I've always wanted to go. It's on my list. Oh, it's super fun. I've never been, I, I don't want to say I've never been as an adult because the last two times I went, I was an adult. One time I was in college and then I was fresh out of college. So I guess I say mm. I've never been as an adult who's not like early 20s. That's oh, okay, like got really it. hard on Bourbon Street. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited to go like now a little older and experience that. Um, yeah. Cause I, I like New Orleans. It is fun. The food's good. The atmosphere's fun. And I've never been for a bachelorette party. So that'll be fun. So I'm sure I'll definitely take pictures and write about that. Um, and then after that, we're heading to Long Beach Island in New Jersey for another wedding. Oh, but okay. again, gonna, like, take a day. I've never been in the area. It's right on the beach. I'm going to enjoy that beach. I haven't been on the beach. And so long. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just like toes in the sand, excited. Um, and then we're going to swing by New York because my boyfriend's sister is pregnant and she's due in May. So we're going to go meet the baby and go to New York. And I haven't been to New York since I was like 13. Wow. So yeah. I'm excited to see the city and like really do that up and go see some things. And that'll definitely be like photography focus and travel blog focus. So that'll be fun to write about. Yeah. And I think that might be all that's like in the books. My sister just texted me about Lollapalooza yesterday. So we'll see. If oh, that <laughs> oh, man. That's another bucket listing for me, too. And, and I lived I've in Illinois been. for three and a half years. Yeah. And yeah. I never went in all the time that I lived. And it's still on my list. I, I yeah. want to do it someday. Yeah. I know. I'll see if this, maybe this year is the year. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward have- to all of it. Good. Yeah. I've got to get back into writing more. So that's kind of been my goal recently too. I have a blog post that should be coming out soon on like the 2023 trends you should be seeing and like more as, as it gets warmer too. Cause I feel like in Minnesota, we like the trends are there, but we're like, we're bundled up in January and February. Oh, oh yeah. 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 So I feel like we'll be seeing a lot more of those that some of the more Southern states and Western states have started. Um, so that'll be coming out soon with like links where you can get stuff and some ideas too. Awesome. I can't wait for it all. Mackenzie, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for your time. Oh yeah. Thank you so much. This is great. I had a blast.